heel regime is an agent of law. Pretty good. <laughs> so, you from at least 400 million persons, you made it here, and you tell me you are an original? Look at your neighbor, tell him or her, you are a VIP. Tell him, you are a VIP, you are a very important person. We are, <laughs> say that, you are a VIP. You are a VIP, you are a very important person. What you say is called a mitochondria, or a mitochondria, a plural mitochondria. These are the energy building houses in our cells. Without them, we can't exist. These are all bacteria that migrated into us, and they give us energy. And for that, they need oxygen and movement. So I would like to do with you what we call the mitochondria deck. This dance, I recommend you to do this dance anytime you feel angry, sad, bored, maybe you don't want to do an assignment that the teacher, your teacher is telling you, or your, your parents can be grating your nerves, or otherwise. Just do this exercise to regain your energy, because all that shows is a, is a sign of lack of energy. So you can regain your energy through natural means, alright? It's a natural topic. So can you turn up with me, please? So, very important. When you do this exercise, you should say the things which are important to you. What is it? Are you, you want to want to, you want to write good grades in class? Say, I am writing good grades. Don't say, I would like to write good grades. That is going to be taken in one year's time, and that's too bad for five times. Say I'm healthy, say I'm rich, say I have good teachers, I have good principals, I have good parents. What is good, what is important for you to say that now in the present tense, all right? So, for the count of three to one, we're going to have our mitochondria dance. Three, two, one, I am happy. I am happy. I am happy. Sit down. <laughs> so take it. You see, it's very in ten, ten seconds, you're back on, you are you feel energetic. So inhale calmness and exhale anxiousness. Inhale peace and exhale hatred of fear. Inhale love and exhale any limitation for you. The microbiome, what's that? Microbiome means it's the summation of all the genomes of the microorganisms that are in an ecosystem. In the context of the gut, it means it's the totality of all the microorganisms which I know about, that means bacteria, viruses, fungi, bacteriophages, these are viruses that attack bacteria, and all other smaller multicellular organisms that are residing in the gut. I must emphasize that there are 40 trillion microbes on and in our body. That's a very big number, that's 40 with 12 zeros after. And that is the same number of cells that we have, human, human cells. So the number of microbes living on and in us is one to one, the ratio. And I must emphasize that, although we are 99,9% .9 genetically identical, we are just, when at all, 5% identical with the microbes that we carry in our gut. 
What are their functions? Why are they so important? Without them, life wouldn't be possible. One, they prevent other pathogenic bacteria to, to, to infect us. It's a very simple concept. When I was doing my master thesis at the Technical University of Belgium, I was doing a measure called Biology of Pathogenic Organisms. The professor at the time gave us a very simple analogy, and I want to wish to share that analogy with you. He said, if you are sitting on this chair now, nobody can take that space because you have made already. And the same thing, when good bacteria colonize our gut, they take the space for bad bacteria to colonize it. So it's a good thing. So we need more of good bacteria in our gut to keep us healthy. Two. They are involved in the production of many vitamins, such as vitamin K and the B vitamins. <coughs> Three, they help in the digestion of our food. They are in food that we can digest. But these microbes in our body do digest them like the fibers that we eat. And in, and in doing so, they produce many short organic acids, some, for example, botanic acid, botanic acid. And with this butanoic acid, it does help for the formation and differentiation of immune cells. Because more than 70% of our immune system is in the gut line. And there are also many other functions that microbes do. So their role can be overestimated. Psychic diseases. These microbes, they do produce metabolites. And this metabolite, they can go to all organs to our body through the vagus nerve. So we got the gut-brain axis, we got the gut-skin axis, we got the gut-liver axis, the gut-heart axis, the gut-lung axis, and many other axes. And it's of great importance. These are some of the diseases that have been proven and shown in many studies that are directly linked to a dysfunction of our, micro, of our gut microbiome. We call that dysbiosis. Dysbiosis means that there is a disharmony in the biodiversity of these microbes that cohabit with us. And when the disharmony does occur, it can lead to many diseases. For example, diseases such as autism and and um, attention deficit hyperactive disorder. Studies have shown that children suffering from these diseases have been treated through the method called stool transplantation or fecal microbial transplantation. It's been very, very common in the US and emerging here in Europe. So you can see what a link we do have when there's a dysfunction with the bacteria in our gut. Also, depression. The way you are depressed, it's good to think if your microbes are happy, maybe they are happy, that's why you are depressed. Because these microbes, they do produce many neurotransmitters such as dopamine and serotonin. And these are the good molecules of emotion. So they are still probiotics that when you eat, in this context, they are called psychobiotics. When you eat them, to help for the colonization of these good bacteria so that these neurotransmitters can be produced. There are also a plethora of many physical diseases which are being caused by these microbes when there is a disbalance. When the stomach is not well, the whole body suffers. These are, for example, diseases which are linked to the direct dysfunction of the microbiome. For example, many autoimmune diseases, they, they are directly linked when there is a disbalance. For example, these diseases, they are chronic. They are, they are chronic illnesses, and chronic illnesses are always linked to chronic inflammation. So these microbes, they, they do two things. Either they produce pro-inflammatory molecules, such as lipopolysaccharides, or they produce anti-inflammatory molecules such as 
the esters of butanic acid called butyrate. So what to take here is to have a very rich microbial diversity in you, to eat as diverse as you can, so that each population of these microbes is being represented in your system. This is a recent study published this year by, by two scientists, one from Kiel, University of Kiel, and one from Canada. They have put, on, put forward a hypothesis in a very prestigious journal, Science. That is the dream of any scientist to publish in a science journal. They said that non communicable diseases such as diabetes, cancer, obesity can be transmitted from one person to another. That's very interesting. Because they argue that if we can cure certain illnesses through the transfer through animals to transportation, it makes sense that other diseases can also be transmitted in such a way. For example, social contact. If you use the same toilet, or the same household utensils, or with sexual partners, because the microbiome of sexual partners, they are very similar as compared to their own relatives. But it's a hypothesis, and we still await what, what are their results, or what more research is to do on that. So what to do? Hippocrates is the father of modern medicine. He's, and he also said, the father of all our troubles and miseries is in the God. He was a wise guy. He also said, let your food be your medicine and let your medicine be your food. And I'll go further with another quote from him. He said, one man's food can be another man's poison. He was right. I said, although we might be 99,9% 9 .9 genetically identical, but the microbes that we have in us can just be 5%. And if at all we have the same microbes living with us, it doesn't mean that what they are producing in you is the same that they are producing in me. I give you an example. At school, you are just a student. A fellow student, but at home, you are a brother, you are a child. Or, at school, you are the principal, at home, you are a husband. But you are the same person, performing different activities. True or not true? So, what does that mean? We should be cautious of what we eat. What someone is eating doesn't mean that what you are eating is good. But thank God, there are many labs nowadays who they do perform microbial tests so they can tell you what is the composition of your gut microbes and what are they producing and they suggest to you the kind of food you have to eat and the kind of food they will suggest to you to avoid so that there should be a balance there should not be a dysbiosis but a biosis in your gut so you can live the life that you always want to live why do I say that? Because the role of the microbiome cannot be overestimated. There is no doubt that antibiotics have played a very big role in the, in the fight against contagious diseases. But there is a flip side of the coin. It's like throwing the bomb to kill the terrorists and you kill many other innocent civilians along. So I am submitting my case for a control use of antibiotics. Don't just take antibiotics anyhow because you are not doing your God good. Also, studies have shown that these microbes, when we, when we take medication, they have first been metabolized by these microbes for the sole aim of extracting energy. So at the end of the day, what you've taken as medication is not a medication. It was shown with Alzheimer's patients. That's why they don't recover from treatment. They are taking medication, but it's been metabolized into something else. So my plea again, we should be cautious how we take antibiotics and the medications we do, we do take. What to do? That's me doing sports. They say if you don't believe uh, the preacher, you can't believe the message. So involve yourself in sports. Do any kind of exercise. I just showed you the microtronal diet. It costs nothing, isn't it? 30 seconds to your back. 
Because sports have got two very important examples. One, with sports, you bring oxygen to your system, and your mitochondria have got energy, to put, um, their mitochondria have got energy, and, you, and your immune system has got energy to fight with this. And two, with oxygen, many of these bad bacteria, they can only do their evil activities in an anaerobic condition. Anaerobic means lack of oxygen. So when you do exercise, you're absorbing oxygen, it is like a poison and a toxin to them. I also encourage you to involve yourself in mindful activi mind mindfulness activities such as meditation and yoga. Because with that, you are calming down your mind and good hormones, psychoactive substances like dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, the body hormone can be produced, <laughs> and the other stress hormones, and, as, such as cortisol, are being reduced. So do all these simple things. They don't cost anything. It's all life in our hands. And in summary, and in closing, what's the take home message? Pay attention to your diet. Because your diet is the most effective tool you've got to take control of your health. Make good use out of it. Thank you.